Okay, so welcome everyone to this community call, uh, which exceptionally is going to be one hour and a half. Um, this is the last um, data package working group, um, kind of like an official get together. Of course, we can continue getting together in the community call also after uh, after June. Um, but so we thought because we are aiming at um, releasing officially data package version two uh, on Monday next week. Um, that it would be good for us all to do a documentation review. Um, so that's why I asked you to go through the website and the guides. Um, so um, I don't know if we want to do maybe a super quick round of intros, uh, sort of like just saying your name, where you are. Um, I think that Bichar is new to the call, so it would be good for him uh, to know the rest of the people. Um, and then we can, yeah, we can deep dive into the doc documentation review. Uh, just the last, um, before we do that, uh, last thing that I wanted to bring to your attention is that um, let's try to stick to one hour of documentation review so that we can devote the last half an hour, 20 minutes to maybe talk about the next steps for the implementations. Um, and yeah, that's it. So let's start with the round of intros. So I'm Sara Petti, I'm the community manager for frictionless data, um, and I'm based in Bologna, Italy. Um, Bicho, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Bicho, I'm in Indiana in the United States at Purdue University, and we're just looking to get involved. Um, Bicho, would you like to select someone to go after you? And welcome, Jan. Maybe oh, great, right. sure. Uh, go ahead, Peter. I'm Peter Desmet. I'm based in Belgium. I work with biodiversity data and I'm maintaining the R package for frictions. And I move to Jan. Jan, it seems that you're muted. So we cannot hear you. Sorry, this should now probably is okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, my internet uh, wasn't working, so I had to move to another location. Uh, um... I am Jan van der Laan. I work at Statistics Netherlands. Um, and at Statistics Netherlands, we've been starting to use uh, frictionless to have for internal, uh, when we build internal research files for researchers, uh, we are planning to use uh, frictionless for that. Uh, so to make it easier for researchers to uh, start working with our data. Um, of course, I don't know who has already been yet. So I'll, uh, Ethan, if. Good choice of having gone. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Ethan Welty. I am based in uh, Zurich, Switzerland, uh, although um, American and French, actually. Um, and I'm at the University of Zurich um, at the World Glacier Monitoring Service. And I feel like I've dabbled with, yeah, we actually were using frictionless um, for some of the ways that we, we package and distribute data uh, and maintain certain, certain data sets and then also have been involved in some of the software tooling in some way or another a little bit on the on the sidelines for a while. Would you want to pick someone to go after you, Ethan? Or yes, I did, but I was already muted. Uh, <laughs> Ev Evgeny. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm Evgeny. I'm based in Portugal, and I'm being. Uh, working for some data for like many years and now helping with the data package uh, uh, version two facilitation. Uh, what about uh, you, Kyle? Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Kyle. I'm uh, here on the west coast of um, uh, the states in, in Oregon. Um, I work at uh, Penn State. Um, I use frictionless for um, education and social science data. Um, I'll pass it to Keith. Hello, everyone. I'm Keith Hewitt. I'm at the National Institutes of Health in the U.S. and based out of uh, Virginia on the East Coast. Um, and I will pass it to Pierre. Felt like Pierre froze and then disappeared. Um, Too much pressure. Uh, Patricio, <laughs> have you gotten? Yes, no, I didn't go it. So uh, thank you. I'm Patricio, currently the tech lead at the Open Knowledge Foundation. 
um, here mostly as a listener and mostly for the second half part of the meeting uh, because we are currently maintaining the frictionless package for Python. So I want to see how like uh, not an implementation and next steps and to have an idea uh, and start planning the work uh, for the package. And I'll choose Steve. I'm Steve Diggs. I'm a research data specialist at the University of California Office of the President. My previous life was in oceanography, where I used frictionless to clean data before submission, to use frictionless and the technologies along with data packaging for all of the University of California in natural sciences. And I will pass it to Jasper. Yeah, I'm Jesper. I'm working at the State Chancellery of the German Federal State of Schleswig-Holstein, and uh, the frictionless uh, specification will play a uh, central part of our open data uh, infrastructure. And I think I'm the last one in the list, but I'm not sure if I've counted correctly. I think Peter needs to go. Phil, am I right? And I think, Pierre also, one froze. I think that's correct. Uh, Peter, do you... You want to go first? Yes, sorry, I have uh, some unstable connection, so I hope you hear me well. Uh, I'm Pierre, I'm working, I'm the maintainer of Validata, which is a tool of uh, data validation, open data validation used by the French administration that uses frictionless, and I'm based in France. And I guess I'll, I'll... Phil, I give you the floor. Thank you. Uh, Phil Schum, I'm a statistician at University of Chicago and in the Center for Translational Data Science, where we build data sharing platforms for NIH, largely NIH funded research. And I think, is that it? I think that's it. Uh, Peter, did you introduce yourself? Me? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, then we can start, I think. Um, so as you all know, um, we'll be reviewing the documentation and the website. So I propose that maybe what we can do first um, is going through the homepage uh, and um, basically collect some feedback from there. So um, one thing that I did suggest um, in the invitation, if you see any typos or stuff like that or rephrasing that I mean, all things that concern rephrasing, maybe let's just open PRs for those. Um, and let's have a more general discussion about um, if the documentation is clear and everything uh, right now on the call. Um, I don't know if, do you think it's more useful that I share my screen? Uh, Peter, yeah, go ahead. Do you have the mark? You, you might have seen I made a pull request like two hours ago and there's a preview at the URL here in the chat. So it might be useful to uh, start from there. Absolutely, yes. Um, yeah, I saw actually the, the the changes that you suggest in the languages and I think they make a lot of sense. Uh, it also makes a lot of sense to maybe have a link that directly redirected documentation. Um, but maybe, yeah, the easiest thing is maybe if I, well, everyone can have a look, but maybe it's easier if I share also my screen. Meanwhile, what do you think? Yeah. Okay. So basically this is um, what homepage looks like um, with some rephrasing that Peter suggested. Um, it's mainly about language and make it more clear what is actually inside, what actually the data package can do and also um, what is uh, inside of the components. So for example, data package, data resource, table dialect and table schema. Um, I'll leave you some time to go through it. Uh, so, and I don't know if Peter, you wanted to add anything to it. Yeah, I, I, there's a couple of things. We use the word simple a lot. I'm not sure that is a word that is, I think used instead of frictionless. I mean, simple was used in the old specifications a lot. This can be interpreted as, well, if I don't understand it, then uh, for newcomers, I mean, uh, simple can be a, yeah, a, a tricky word, but uh, I think we can use it here. 
uh, I really wanted to highlight that it's uh, extensible, uh, so you can build upon it. I think that wasn't listed yet. And then if you scroll down to the standard, the four specifications we had, I listed there what type of things it includes. Like, for example, data package has contributors or a table schema has foreign keys. So people who are like looking for the right one, whoever they visited the page for the first time, can find things a bit faster, which is why I want those four things to be clickable. Um, but yeah, my general impression is that you have the standards, the software and the adoption. Uh, that is good. The adoption is always a bit of a, yeah, a broad overview. You cannot list everything there. So I'm not entirely sure how, yeah, which ones we should highlight there. But as a more technical user, yeah, I definitely want specifications and the software first. Um, I wanted to pick up on something that actually Peter didn't, didn't say just now, but did say in, in the pull request, because I had very much the same. Well, actually, first, I also felt that simple was maybe is a dangerous word, or it's a bit judgmental, or it can kind of sound that way. Uh, and maybe minimalist or minimal, but extensible could be a way of uh, achieving something maybe more, more descriptive. Um, I do very much, so repeating what uh, Peter wrote in, in the pull request, I also really was confused by the navigation actually, and what is and isn't a link. Uh, mm -hmm. And I felt that that's, this was actually like really quite conf not, un, not intuitive. So all the links are just links to themselves or like all the titles, the headings are links to themselves, which I find very strange. Um, I understand, I think in some UIs, it's like it'll show the little anchor link on the left of the title. And that way you can, you know, you get the link to link to that particular spot in the document. But whenever I saw the, the underlined, if you hover in the underlines, I always thought it would bring me somewhere, but it doesn't. It just brings me to the place I'm already at. I find this, yeah, not intuitive at all. And then I very much think that the tiles, um, like the data package, the data resources actually should link to the actual thing uh, and not, you don't have to click the little link that says explore the standard. And that's the same also further, like this goes throughout the structure of the documentation. Uh, like for example, then I thought the software, if you click software, it's a link, but it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, you have to click explore the software. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like actually the software, the screenshot should probably go and be replaced by tiles of all the actual software, which would then link to each of the softwares, which are anyway, there's a there's a place for each of these in the documentation. Um, and then probably going down to the next step, um, maybe adoption, maybe it can be a bit smaller, maybe, but that's, um, <laughs> um, and, and then, yeah, I'll maybe stop there and I'll have more later. <laughs> Thank you, Ethan, that's very useful actually. And I think Peter also did highlight that those, um, pieces should actually link somewhere. Uh, but Jasper, you wanted to go next and yeah. then that's Keith. Yeah, the, um, the others already said a lot out of the things I've also, I've also noticed. Um, maybe what I would find confusing if I wouldn't know frictionless and I would see this this huge uh, or this yeah, big screenshot of the software. So I would think it's it's a kind of a, yeah, the, the one. It's, it's a GUI. I would think it's it's, it's a GUI or or a one one program, but, but that's not what, friction is so I think this this might be misleading if we start with this visual um, with this visual tool as the software thanks Jasper um, peace so one of the suggestions I have could actually potentially help solve that problem which is so you have the four kind of main components there, the data package, data resources, and they each have their own box and a little icon. Um, one thing that could be helpful is maybe to have a figure that shows how they're all connected in a typical like symbolic you know, data package, because there's kind of like a hierarchical organization and that's not conveyed here. They're just shown as like a set of items. Um, and then by having that overview figure and kind of conveying that this is meant to be like a file standard and they're all kind of connected in this useful way that could help kind of, yeah, uh, not mislead. Um, also same thought on the clickable links. Um, and then the other thing that came to mind, 
So here, and I, I'll bring this up again in the documentation, um, you have the data package, data resource, table dialect, and tato, table schema. It suggests to me at least that this is a data standard for tabular data. Um, and I think it would be good to have a separate box at the below those that uh, says like other formats and gives examples that aren't table data um, to make it really clear that the scope is not just that. Yeah, very good point. Um, Peter. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking for the software, I agree that the big screenshot, it might be better to also just replace that with cards, um, like the main ones we have. I think there's one guide that mentions this one, the Pi and the, and the R framework, so having those things. And I think for the schema that Keith mentions, I think it would be useful, you already have explored the standards, that that is... Currently, that page leads to a page where the same things are listed. I think that page should start with the schema. Um, to So you can explore the standards as in, okay, I want to know what this is about. I think I would have the schema here. And then for the ones that are already a little bit more familiar, they can click on any of the four boxes if you revisit the home page, because that is what most people are going to do once they know a bit what this is about. Um, I've also think about the adoption what would be more useful might be um but it's more work to to have uh, a select number of testimonials or user stories and how things have how friction no how data package has helped certain things in an organization and this could be blog posts because that thing might get old too but i think it's maybe it's going to be a bit more useful than just having a, a bunch of tiles of companies or organizations you might or might not recognize. Yeah, that's true. And it's a very good point. I think, for example, in among like the blogs that we wrote in the past one, I mean, the ones that are most successful and more read by people are the ones where people actually testimony how like friction has really changed the way that, I mean, really improved the data workflows. So I think it could make a lot of sense. It will take some time. So maybe that's something that we'll need to tackle after uh, the kind of like official release, but definitely something worth doing it. So uh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Thanks, Peter. Um, I don't know if Phil raised his hand first or Keith. So uh, you'll have to fight over who goes first. <laughs> Keith can go. Uh, I don't didn't intend to raise my hand, so I don't, I add this oh. to the chat. Okay, oh. then that's it, the feel you go. So uh, two things, I mean, a, a lot of this really looks wonderful, I, I will say, and, and, and some of the key choices. Um, uh, two things real quick. Uh, the first is related to the idea of a diagram that sort of shows how the pieces fit together. I think it would be really nice to illustrate um, the, in principle, of course, uh, ability to pull frictionless data packages directly into R, as you can now, and then hopefully things like SAS and Stata and, and sort of all the rest. In other words, from a consumer perspective, um, uh, and, and, and so the ability to deliver data in exactly the way that users can immediately use it with, you know, in a native way, that I think would be a really nice thing to to elevate slightly. And then the other thing, and this is related to the comment about the tiles showing adoption. I, I'm going to say this in a way that sounds US centric because that's where I am and that's what I know. But what I'm imagining would be something that could be, you know, could, could include the equivalent for other countries. But I think given what frictionless does and given where we are in terms of data sharing at the federal level, especially NIH but also NSF and other initiatives coming from, you know, coming from the White House. Um, I think we should say something about uh, frictionless being consistent with fair data standards. Um, and I would be glad to draft some language around this. I'm sure Keith would have some, you know, some good thoughts about this too. I just think it's a mistake because when people, I can tell you what I'm going to do with this as soon as it's up is that I'm going to point lots of folks at NIH to look at this and what they're going to be looking for here is to see that that this allows you to adhere to fair data standards which I, I know has has been adopted and has been so so 
fair is not just U.S. centric, but um, but this is well in line with data sharing at, at the federal level in the U.S. And so what I would kind of imagine would be maybe we could do this in a way that pulled the equivalent of other countries into that. I think that's an interesting point that you're raising. Phil. Would you see that as really like another tile or would you see that as a kind of like introduction for this? I would see adoption? that as a section. It could be down further. It doesn't have to be above the full necessarily. But 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 again, it's for those of us who want to point people to this. As long as we can tell them, scroll down to the part that, you know, that's or, you know, search for it. It just needs to be really, really evident. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, Ethan, I think next. Sure. Um, yeah, I, so I I had since thoughts along this, these lines. Um, actually, when I what happened to me is I clicked on GitHub in the adoption section and got to this repo with GitHub data, but there's no mention of frictionless anywhere. And it took me a while to realize that there is happens to be a data package.json uh, file that they generate. And so that's like, a, I guess, an interface to those data sets. I, I would say, I think I would have rather do here is maybe I would suggest having a, a directory of data sets that are data packages. <laughs> I guess I would have expected to, to see that. Maybe that should be more up front and center. And that would be really the adoption because that's how I actually kind of more expected. Um, and I know that that's already in existence, um, right? Isn't it at like data packages.frictionalstata.io? Um, so it seems like maybe that should be somehow end up here uh, in some form. And that would be like the more tangible adoption, like look at all the data sets that are already using this. Um, and then there would be maybe below that, um, then it could be like projects or use cases, and it would be actual articles, testimonials, where it's you know you can actually read about people's experience using it um, and why. Um, maybe in terms of like the, the benefits to you know why one would use this or why why would um, an organization, a country, and so on use this? I don't know if it's worth you thinking in terms of like. Data without and data with, <laughs> like a you know a naked data set and then one that has the package around it and and what are the benefits um, to the to the clothing? <laughs> Thanks, Ethan. Um, Jasper. Yeah, I just got an idea when when. Is... I think it was Peter mentioned of this this showing how easy it is working with frictions. Um, maybe it can be is possible to replace the software image with a car carousel. I'm not sure how to pronounce it with with a, with a slideshow and and one uh, so so changing between the, the the GUI and some programming language and we can include some kind of it, it used to be a gif a gif or anim an animated image um, showing the, um, how someone types Python code and um, with just on or or uh, a shell script and with just uh, two or three lines of code, uh, you you get you get a result. So I would think this could be really um, uh, convincing that that it it's super simple to use if if the data is uh, described with frictionless. Yeah, that could make a lot of sense. Thanks. Um... Sorry, Keith, I'm just assuming your hand is still raised from before. Or do you want to say something? OK, um, Peter. Actually, I, for Zoom was showing it as already lowered, but I just lowered it now. Sorry about that. OK, no, no worries. <laughs> yeah, I want to, um, uh, so Phil mentioned, mentioned FAIR. I 100% agree. I mean, if you go to the introduction, the first intro uh, line at the very top, it says, a data definition language. I don't know what this is, but that word is mentioned there maybe for uh, search engine optimization. It's also a data API, but I think FAIR should be there. It should like say that facilitates FAIR data exchange because that is when people hear about data packages, it's often in the, especially in the research context is in the context of FAIR. And if they see it there, then they know, okay, I'm on the right landing page. page. And yeah, I also really like uh, Jasper's idea of another software section where you have like the task per software that you could have tabs with 
even if it's just a GIF that is like 10 seconds long, like type these commands and hey, maybe you can see your data here uh, that is an engaging for people to explore. So I've added all of these to the to community call doc. Sorry, I was muted and talking. Um, do you have any other comments about the home page um, or other additional feedback? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Just, just a quick thing. Uh, yeah, I was I was uh, trying to write Sarah in different <laughs> channels and realized that you can can read it. Uh, shall we switch to the like bright uh, version of the site because it's kind of like uh, it will be looks uh, more like finished, optimized uh, in the right, top, right, something. Okay, yes, absolutely. I don't know if it, whatever you, you like. Can you see it now? Yeah. I put it in light, yeah. Sorry, I have yeah, everything just... in dark mode um, and I realized that it's better in light action. Yeah, actually just, um... It's more optimized for the white, but uh, I still not like uh, on the like CMA, uh, like engine settings to make it by default. So it's uh, just based on your system defaults. Uh, yes, sorry, Peter. Yeah, one aspect about the, the visuals. So currently the four specifications have an icon that was, I think, chosen from a generic icon set. I was curious if there's plans for a logo for data package that then can be reduced reused by the software implementations that that, that have it. Um, yeah, is there branding for data package? I see there's a logo in the header, um, but yeah, what's the idea about branding for data package versus frictionless? Um, yeah, so we do have a logo that was um, developed by the Open Knowledge Foundation, uh, which is the DP uh, in kind of like uh, light blue. Um, we might want to revisit a little bit for accessibility. I think that we have to um, yeah, um, contrast it a bit more, probably. But ideally, that's the one that we want to use for data package only, though. One other thing you might also consider is on the homepage, you have those different colored boxes representing the data packages. It could be neat at some point to add a little kind of logo or subtle kind of symbol on each of them indicating like different contents. So one could be, you know, image data, table data, like climate data or whatever. So if this you can imagine you creating some, yeah. And then those can yeah. be reused if there's any kind of core types that are commonly useful to talk about in the guides. You could kind of reinforce the idea by giving them a different visual appearance. Yeah, that would be very nice. Um, okay, any additional comment on the home page? Now that it's in light mode, then probably slightly better looking. This is a very small thing, but um, I, I realized that actually the same thing is being called different two different things in a way, I think. But like use cases and adoption, I think are, are linking to the same things. Is that true? Um, adoption. So if you click use cases, yeah, and that's a bit I don't know, sort of odd, but not a big deal. Um, another thing I had, I I mean maybe this is I'm being really too picky here, but for some reason that <laughs> you're getting the case, and then you know it's a problem. But is there a reason why there's title case um, and not sentence case, or like, or I think there's a bit of a mix. 
and I, maybe I'm very, very sensitive to these things, but it like stood out to me. Um, but like use cases, the C is capitalized, you see what I mean? Anyway. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's just destruction, <laughs> to be honest with you, but. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, no, I'm more, I think a more, a more important comment I can make is that I feel like maybe the documentation should come above adoption. I'm not, that's, that's something or like the, if you scroll down the sequence, I feel like, um, that's sort of something I felt that maybe because the adoption block is so large, the documentation really feels at the bottom. Uh, it almost looks like a footer to me. Um, even though it seems like it's actually pretty important. Um, for someone who's kind of on the side trying to head to somewhere specific. Um, yeah, that's a very good point. I think that in our mind, it's just that people would be attracted to the get started bottom and that's how they would get there. But I think it's a fair point to maybe bring them up a little bit so they don't look like smashed at the bottom like a note, know, as you said. Those yeah. links should also just go at the top. Maybe if there's room, well, maybe not mobile version, but I mean, it is just a menu. It's just a menu, basically. So I don't know if I could go somewhere fixed, like at the top bar. Yeah, that could be an option. Um, Peter. Um, I was thinking if it's possible to have the version number part of the header, this is what Bootstrap does, trying to go and uh... See if I can link it here. And it also allows to explore the old documentation for previous versions. I was wondering if we're planning something similar with um, with data package. Yeah, um, I think we definitely need a, at least the link to version one. Similarly to what we have on the frictions framework. And, and later we adjust like full, uh, fully evolved like versioning. It will probably take some time to implement, but uh, I don't know. I think we need to discuss it. What kind of uh, versioning after version two we need. Uh, actually, I created uh, an issue to have at least a kind of like a, a not blocks in the specs itself, saying like new in version two, new in version three, at least at the kind of like first step, I think, to make it uh, more traceable. But um, we need to think whether we need a kind of like after version two, like do we need a website for each like version two, one, version two, two, or something like this? So, so it's, yeah, I think just for now we need to create an issue and uh, I will link to version one. Yeah, that's actually a very good point. But yeah, maybe let's keep that as a discussion for now and we can keep thinking about it. Um, even beyond the, the release. Um, any other comment? Otherwise we can move maybe to the documentation. Okay, let's get started. Um, okay, so those are the guides. Um, one thing that maybe I wanted to ask you all before we go into all the sections is um, how did you find the navigation and how the information, if the information, the way it is structured made sense to you? Yeah, Jasper. I found it a bit confusing that this that this introduction has so many subheaders. Um, 
but they are very short block. Oh no, the Q principles. Maybe I've mixed it up. But 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 when I click here on on let's say guides, that's that's an, that's the that's the abstract for the guide section that has its own its own chapter in, in the documentation. And this this block is very very short compared to the to, to the section let's say table schema when i click on table schema it's it's a huge huge uh, yeah yeah it's, it's, it's a really long long page so so I, I was at first a bit confused about this short just just abstracts appearing beneath standard i think it's it's from a specification on specification to at least adoption those are very very short um things and then uh, maybe it's, uh, we could uh I don't know if they if they need their own um, heading at that at that level. Uh, yeah, a good point, Ethan. Um, Evgen, I don't know if you want to quickly react to that. Um, I think the idea is also to expand a little bit later on. But Evgen, yeah, uh, yeah, I think we can totally like remove some useless um, sections from the menu. But like generally speaking, the idea is uh, having kind of like. This like book like approach. So, for example, when you on mobile, you just click like next, 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 and it's uh, it creates kind of like a readable um, uh, flow. So uh, that's why, for example, you uh, introduction. For example, there is like standard specifications a section, and so it's it will be like the second page you you read on the website, and you can then you know go to this uh, to the specification uh, you like interested. Uh, in because like on a mobile you won't see the menu like by default, so you you can just you know by be reading uh like page page by page, but uh, yeah, that makes, that makes sense. Guys... On, a, on a smaller device, it's, it's on, a, on a big screen. It looks a little, a little bit lost these texts, um, but but on a smallest device, it it, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but of course, like we can remove guides because it it's just it it was added kind of like for like you know for. Uh, to make it like complete, but it's of course not not needed really. Yeah, thanks, Evgeny. Uh, Ethan, I think you were next. Um, yeah, on exactly this. Um, I, I that's the main issue I had with the structure. Um, where there's actually multiple, it's like multiple trees in parallel. Um, so there's a lot of different, there's a lot of duplication. So there's, it's definitely a lot of repetition where we have guides and there's actually a section for guides as a, as a recipes and then there's a whole section of recipes. And I wonder, so I'm, I'm trying to con consider what Evgeny just said here, but I feel like I would expect that if I click on recipes, I get the overview of what recipes are. And then there's sub sections or sub pages that would expand on the left there. That would be then, the recipes and I could I guess maybe for the I don't know if this is possible for the mobile and I don't know if this is something that we should optimize for if uh, but if that's a priority then I suppose if you go next it could I don't know if you can like go next to the next major section or you can go dive into the subsections um, so that you don't you can sort of choose at what level you navigate if in your left and right kind of buttons um, but it seems like it, there's an, a tremendous amount of more uh, sections than there actually are. <laughs> um, and I think that makes it quite a bit confusing. Um, and there's something kind of related to this here is that if you go on a page that has a lot of structure, so like for some reason I find it very unintuitive that for example, I was on t oh, any of these pages, like the one we're on here, um, you're navigating at the larger scale on the far left but actually to navigate within a page is the very far right. Um, and I don't know if I, it could just be just, it could just be an expansion on the left or it could just be kind of next to the left one, but it's like, I, I somehow found this quite confusing um, to navigate uh, where it seems like ultimately it could just be a single tree with no duplication and it's all in one place. Um, kind of this one left accordion menu. Um, but that was kind of my first, my initial reaction. Yeah, thanks, Susan. Um, again, I don't know if your hand is raised from before or if you wanted to add anything. 
yeah regarding uh the like three column structure just you know kind of like default for this uh like documentation engine and at least it widely used in uh like software world then there is a separation between uh like pages and on the page uh, navigation but um yeah regarding uh this um, like guides recipes actually personally like i like to have kind of like a introduction map for someone who don't want to read like more than like one page or something like a user let's say a person who you know who short on time and just we need to get him interested in the uh, reading uh, like the rest or something uh, but um, yeah we, we, i think we can put everything into introduction just having kind of like uh, recommend reading these uh, guides these recipes and it, it will uh, initially i think the standard section was uh, quite small but now we have governance change work a lot of stuff so we can remove uh white guys whatever all this stuff um pierre yes i wanted to point out that there are two links that are called extensions one in the standard block and one in the specification block and it's kind of confusing uh which one leads to what page. Uh, I think the first one is for uh, uh, profiles, real real profiles, and the second is, is uh, to tell how to write extensions. Yeah, that's a fair point. I think we can just call this one probably how to create an extension or something like this so that we differentiate it from what is already existing. Um, and, and but as well, like four of them is a standard extensions recipes guys and specification can be just removed i think because it's the same thing we discussed like previously but i i think i think pm means the extensions and the specifications in an extension section so yeah. oh this one yeah ah uh, yeah, actually, actually, I, I I missed the third one. Yes, there are three <laughs> links, so we can remove the first one, but still there is a, some kind of confusion. Um, Evgeny, and then oh, Evgeny, you didn't have your hand raised. So Peter, you can go ahead. Yeah, I'm also thinking about this, like the, the first section that we have there, which is called standard, has a lot of sections that to me are not about the standard. And then there's the specification sections, which I consider the most important one, which is the four ones, and then extensions, glossary, and security somehow is there. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out a navigation that makes sense. I mean, the first thing is people want an introduction. I think then they want to dive into the standard, which are the specifications. And then there is guides on how to use it, the software on how to use it. There is a whole section on how this thing is maintained, which is where the governance and the change log uh, appear. And there's a section on how you can extend it. So I'm, I'm trying to think how we can have a, a navigation where one, the specifications are higher than all these pages that are before it, and where the other pages are grouped more logically. And one of the questions I have, is it possible for those main um, dropdowns that you have to have pages linking to those directly? Like if you click sp specifications, the title that it opens a page or that the first page under it is for example, called introduction. So it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, rather than like page by page deciding which one should be there and which one should not be there and trying to figure out what navigation structure for the whole website makes sense. Because I, I do really like the left menu being, this is the website navigation and the right one being the in-page navigation. Um, but I'm not entirely sure that the, the left page navigation is currently structured in a way that makes sense. 
Um, can you add your hand raised so maybe you can respond to some of the questions um, that Peter had? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think actually I like the idea of moving uh, the overview uh, sections to like each uh, header, like specifications, introduction, like extensions, introduction. It will make more sense and make them like a wall in the uh, flow, reading flow. On the other hand, I would not like fully agree that uh, kind of like specifications of course, specifications is the most important part of the standard, but like it really depends on the reader what what the most most important information for for the reader. For example, for us, it's specifications. But I would say so. For example, for a pretty new person who just interested in maybe trying to figure out what is like data package, uh, reading specification is specifications is not like the most important, but Maybe some like high level overview, what software available, where it's used, use cases. It's more important for uh, like newcomer. I don't know what do you think. So, so that was the idea of having like this standard instead of just. So, I think uh, like version, previous version was exactly like you open the site and it's a lot of like low level, like uh, data package relation to table schema. But uh, if you if I don't like even know what is it and why I need it, so I don't really interested in reading like twenty pages table schema, right? But just my opinion, uh, like my my impression of. I agree that we definitely would need, I think, a more general overview um, of what data packages for people that are just joining. Um, so maybe not starting with the specifications, but with an introduction instead. Um, I don't know about adoptions and the rest. What do the others think? Yeah, but definitely we need to make it shorter, the, the, the first part, maybe like introduction, why use and like governance and something like this. Change work can be also, I think, in the, at the bottom. Um, Phil. Yeah, um, I, if I'm following correctly, I'm not sure that even though they sound like slightly different suggestions, I think a lot of the suggestions folks have been made are, are could could be quite consistent with each other. Um, I, I was going to start with a suggestion that I don't think anyone said explicitly, but is is definitely consistent with what others said, which is that you know the standard, I think as a as a rather to be a rather technical thing, and as Evgeny said, that is in some sense the most important. I'm not sure that needs to be at the top, but it I think everything pertaining to the standard, the specifications, the governance of that standard, the change log for that standard should be in one place for people who know that that's what they're going for. And I think that things like, you know, software and recipes and so forth are not part of the standard. They would come under a different whole section. Um, I do think at the top, we have an option of either something like an overview or something like a quick start. Those are very different things. Both can be helpful. We could possibly even have both, but I think we need to decide, is that an overview, like an introduction from a document, or is it a quick start? And maybe we have a different section that's a quick start, but I, I would take the things that pertain to the standard and locate them under a single header that just deals with the standard itself, so that for people who want that formalism, they only they know exactly where they're going for it. Um, that would be a little more consistent with other websites that hold uh, standards. Um, I'm not saying the other stuff isn't important; it is, but I, I just I think it's different people who will be coming to that versus people who are coming for the other things. Yeah. Thanks, Phil. Um, Steve? Yeah, I, I have to second Phil's point. Um, you know, for those of us who are beginners and not digging around the technical, and I find this to be true for a lot of the projects like this, the people who are looking at the documentation have are sort of 
bimodal. They have two different sets of expertise. Some very much experts are looking for their thing to be prominent. But people who start with a beginner mind is, what is this? Get me up to speed as quickly as possible. So scaffolded it up in very non-technical terms. And we need to have upfront maybe images that are conceptual in nature that show what most people don't have. They don't have data packages and the improvement right there. So conveying that information as quickly as possible on a page about data packages, I think it's going to be essential because we're not just hopefully singing to the choir, but we want to have new people on board and go, yeah, I get it. Um, tell me more. I'm ready for a deep dive and then have the rest structured. So that supports that deep dive. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, Peter. And yeah, I want to second that. I mean, one, to group all the things that are the standards rather than that specifications header. And that is a very good suggestion. And I also like the, the getting started, which can be mixed a bit with the design philosophy. It, it's the thing what we all use if we want to convince somebody to use data package and I think we should have a page for that like why do you use this and for me it's always I have data and I want to describe the table headers somehow how do I do this do I start in a readme document and I know I want to add this to be machine readable which is a bit of a story and, and can be fairly long too but if we have um, the in-page navigation it, it's the whole rationale for data package and i think we should have a page for that which combines a lot of the things we have uh, and i think then we don't need um, some of the pages we currently have if we have a rationale as one of the first pages um okay go ahead yeah yeah i also really like the idea of uh, having everything uh that was specified by us as a standard so yeah, I just had kind of like a little bit different idea that standard is kind of like wide standard, but I think it makes sense if a uh, standard is uh, like everything related to the standard itself, uh, specifications, governance, and change work. And, uh, but um, yeah, I think uh, Steve uh, had a good point that um, basically, so, so I agree like with uh, what people say uh, that, uh, in my in my opinion, kind of we create this site, not for us. <laughs> we use a uh, GitHub for working on the standards. So we need we need this yeah we need this kind of like a free like two free like uh, introduction, good articles rationally, uh, like who use it. Uh, so what's benefits? So that that, that basically that's the point of uh, what we review because for the technical part we have already kind of like voted for many months on the specifications and uh, if whatever it's it is on like github just a markdown or here it's it's basically the same for us so uh, in my opinion yeah kind of like the, the the core the main audience here is like people who just maybe thinking i have like three percent interest of maybe trying something for data standardization so like show me show me why i need to read like all these specifications whatever And for us, we keep this like standard section. Uh, Peter. The agenda says anything missing. And, yeah. Um, I was wondering if it's useful to um, list alternatives for data package and how it differs, or there is this uh, CSV on the web standard and how it links to that, um, because that's an other part in convincing people in using data package is how well it aligns with other standards and i think there is in some sections somewhere it says yeah we're borrowing from zinoldo and data site and 
a number of other things. So I think that is something that um, should go on this rationale introduction page. Um, yeah, to to show that this is not like a, a thing in a vacuum. Um, so yeah, that is something I think should be added to. And also for working on this pages. Um, yeah, these are now all GitHub pages, but it might be useful to um, work on this a bit more free flow in a, in a Google Doc to try things out uh, with, with a number of people. Or do we, and, and, and then move things over to GitHub? Or do you, like, how, how are we going to tackle rewriting some of these pages? That's a good question. Um, Evgeny, do you want to, do you have insight on that? Mm, uh, like usually kind of like all my experience, uh, suggests that like moving things from different formats, it's like, uh, too heavy for everyone, even though like maybe trying Google docs, it's easier than converting one down and back. But by the way, uh, have uh, like Google docs gotten like my markdown support lately? I don't know. Yeah. If yes, we, it might make sense. But also, by the way, there is like, I think, markdown based like notion solutions for collaboration if needed. So we can at least write something. I think let me get my head around this and what the easiest thing would be also, but I can get started on maybe sharing some docs or whatever we decide to um to pick in the end i think at, at least for this kind of like you know i mean getting started page which should also convince people why they should use data package and what are the advantages and all of that it could be really nice to have a kind of crowdsource ideas around that um peter you wanted to say something yeah it's um also on consistency of the websites, what I've noticed in the specifications, I mean, these have now grown organically, but yeah, I think they could really benefit from a single person going through them and aligning the things a little bit more. I know there are specifications, so they should go through pull requests and, and, and review, but I noticed for table schema, for example, no, um, table dialect, for example, each property starts with a table dialect may contain a property that blah, blah, blah. While for the table schema, it's different. Uh, some of the, I mean, there's a lot of inconsistency currently in the specification. And yeah, I, I think that is definitely something that needs to be done to go through this as a single editor. Yeah. Um, okay, we are kind of like running a bit out of time and I think in a way we probably covered most um, of the things that we wanted to know about uh, documentation. So we have some action plans um, and a few next steps that we need to think about. But um, I just wanted maybe to give a sort of like last shout out to people if there's anything else that they would like to add on this before we move to the next session about implementations, Keith. Yeah, sorry, I don't, uh, raising hands, still not working, so I'm just going to chime in. Um, but I kind of alluded to this earlier. The big point I have is still, I think it would be good to intentionally uh, move away from the table-specific uh, language. So in the specification section of the documentation, for instance, uh, they list uh, the four, what is it, the four key components of data package. And among those four key components are table dialect and table schema. So this makes it seem, again, like this is kind of all about a data standard for tabular data, or that these are somehow kind of like first-class citizens, and then other data types are not as important. So I think if we can get away from that and start to abstract things a bit more, or at least include other examples, that would be a good thing. Yeah, fair point, and duly noted. Um, Jasper. Yeah, I would like to know how, how to um contribute to the project we have the link to the there, there's there's one github link 
uh, on the top top right. But is this? But, but there are more repositories. If, to, for example, the the specifications are in other Git uh, GitHub repositories, is is that true? So, how do we get to these other uh, repositories? Is uh, maybe I've missed the links in in the, in the website, or or do you plan to move everything to this one new uh, repository, this um, data package repository, or? Or did I miss the links, or are, are those links not there? There, there used to be other repositories for for table schema and for uh, specs. Yeah, it was called specs, and there was also the other this, this software. But but yeah, but by missing these these links to the other Git Git repositories, where we can we can engage and and write write issues and pull requests. Uh, Evgeny. Um. Yeah, so we're just going to merge everything back to the specs, the main repo, and it will be the only repository for the website, documentation, specifications, everything related to the data package project as itself. So currently for version two, we kind of like forked specifications to, to the new website, but it will be uh, merged back. Um, Peter. So, Evgeny, do I understand that all of the things that are currently in the data package repository will be moved to the specs repository? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so because uh, like specs have kind of like all these like stars and watchers. So we just we okay. did the same for friction spy when we worked on the new version. When we just and then the Gosh. old web, the version one website will be maintained from that repository or form an, a, a copy of that repository. Yeah, so just uh, I think the same uh, same as on friction spy it will be a, a branch mm, like version okay. one and it yeah. will be in the same repo. Also, I'm going to keep uh, like commits history from the new one and um, yeah, basically yeah, similar yeah. to what we did for friction spy. My hand was up for Keith's comment. We said, yeah, it would be useful to move a little bit away from the tabular phrasing and make it more abstract. I don't agree 100% because, I mean, currently the main thing that is there is for tabular data. And that is already a huge scope that we're carving off. And that if I'm arriving on this website and it is a bit too abstract, I also don't recognize what is there and like feel like, ah, okay, this is something I can use. So I would suggest if we, uh, I, I would keep the focus on Tabler because that's a very recognizable like scope for people that are there, but also mention that it could be used for other things as well when we adopt those other things. So yeah, that, that's my opinion on this. Uh, initially, I was thinking it it would be like file dialect, not table dialect. But uh, I don't see we have kind of like uh, use cases or demand for something related to you know markdown dialects or whatever. But uh... um. I guess I have a comment and a question, or like, uh, this, what is going to be the time? Is you know what's at this point? What's or what can we fit in what amount of time? And I'm just going to give a very specific example. I just realized that the unique keys recipe that I had originally drafted long ago, I realized it's actually in the spec, but I have a bit of a I have, a, I have an issue with it. <laughs> uh, I guess I never had a chance to review review it. Um, and so, like, would there be time for me to be like, oh, can we change this one thing to make it clear? Or, you know, like, what's now, when is the final, and, and then what does final mean? Like, how, how does it evolve from there? Maybe that'd be helpful to know if I should, you know, worry about this or if I can leave it for later. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ethan. And I let Evgeny complete uh, some of my answers here. But so um, we were kind of like officially targeting the 24th of June, so Monday, um, for the kind of like official release. Now, because we have versioning, of course, this will mean an official release of, of version two, but it doesn't mean that we cannot 
change things afterwards. Um, that's the whole point of versioning itself. Now, with all the changes that we need to do to the website and documentation, I'm thinking maybe we'll push a little bit the release of a couple of days. Um, I mean, the website won't be finalized by then, but I think at least it could be in better shape um, and we can at least resolve some of the major issues. Um, but yeah, Evgeny, feel free to jump on this. Um, kind of like uh, in general, I think it's uh, like it's a live thing. And unless we change anything that needs to be voted by the working group that change uh, uh, profiles, just on schemas, uh, if we will just continue working on the wording website improvements, it's not tied to the version. I don't know if, if Peter agree. Yeah, Peter, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was thinking also, I mean, there's updates to the websites that don't have anything to do with the versioning. I think those can be implemented on the main branch as is, but it might be good to have a version 2.x branch. And I know that for every brand branch, there's a website too, where we can add the things uh, that are part of a new version. So we can bundle things there before, like, and then once everything is wrapped up, merge that into the main branch again. So, and that is then the release of a, of a new version. Because otherwise I think we're going to end up with a website that is always in an in-between state and never like for an actual, the released version. So yeah, that might be a solution to have like a, a, a developed branch uh, for things that are for the upcoming version. And I really like that for every branch we have, we actually have a URL uh, as well. It's a good point because now we store uh, profiles, some schemas uh, built once in the code base because otherwise we can be working with this like immutable system. So we need a system for uh, really cycle whether it's uh, maybe main branch as to develop and uh, text for releases, but uh, yeah, it's something I, I, I'll figure out right now. Okay, with that, I think that we probably need to move to the next point, which is the next steps for implementations. Um, so, I mean, I guess, Peter, you're already doing some stuff with um, the R library. Um, I don't know if you want to share a little bit about this. Um... Yeah. Um, so I, I tried to follow a little bit on what needs to be changed in the, in the frictionless R package, but I, at some point I knew I wouldn't be able to keep up. So I'll have to read the whole change log uh, and see what needs to be changed there. And I hope this summer to have um, a coding sprint with some colleagues to implement certain things. And I've discussed this a little bit with Kyle too, um, who is yeah developing dependencies I'll definitely use. But I think it will be integrated into the frictionless R package a bit organically up until the next release with many features maybe saying, well, this is currently not implemented. And then at some point, uh, so it's at least clear from the documentation that things are uh, not implemented. And hopefully at some point I'll get there. That's the, the things that are really useful for uh, to have in the R package um, are supported. So we have a, a version two um, supporting frictionless R package. The problem is this is all coming in between other stuff, so I cannot make any promises on, on when this will be released. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to, to work on this. And it's the same for CamtrapDP, which builds on um, a data package. Uh, I hope to update that one too to version two. And if that is the case, I definitely want the frictionless R package to be able to read that because there's a whole ecosystem of packages getting developed on top of that. So. There's definitely an incentive for me to to update it. Um, but yeah, for anybody who wants to contribute, um, yeah, you can let me know, uh, or you can respond to issues in the Frictionless R repository. Um, yeah, definitely welcome. Thanks, Peter, for sharing. Um, Jasper, you have your hand raised. Yes, someone asked me about the status of the JavaScript package. I, I'm not using it by myself, but I've discovered there are at least two two different, you know, not only versions, but two different projects. Um, and I, I thought the one 
there's this data package JS and there's a frictionless JS and both are, seem pretty old. Um, does any one of you know if, if one of these projects is, is active and why are there two projects and are they are both still active or are both not active anymore? I think in the in the new website you link to the yeah, look it up. I think the other one then I, they are found uh, software here. Yeah. It links to the frictionless JS and I've found the data package JS which seems to be a bit newer but but also pretty old. And um, yeah, do you know if if one of these projects is is active? Um, I'll let Afghani maybe speak a bit more about that. They were maintained by the Utopian up to a certain moment, but I don't know if they're doing much about it. Do you know anything, Afghani? I think the Friction Spy or Friction JS is a newer one, but uh, it's not currently maintained by the Utopian. I think. So I think JavaScript is a kind of like a area we need to catch up. And um, I don't see where the Currently, my both data package JS and fiction JS that they will be updated. So, um, so that's we need to think here, yeah, yeah, regarding JavaScript because it's kind of like important. I think uh, uh, previously, when with Lily, I remember we thought that uh, basically. The like the most important ones for for the project are Python obviously uh, R and JavaScript with the third one, so we definitely missing on the proper uh, JavaScript implementations. Uh, Peter, yes. Um, the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, or GB for the people who know, to know it's just like a huge database where all kinds of biodiversity data comes together. They're looking into adopting data package uh, as part of a data publication format. Um, and they have a tool that where you can publish data sets, uh, which is Java-based. And they have looked in the Java implementation of frictionless data packages and found it lacking in some key aspects. Are there people in on the community maintaining this? I mean, they have, I think, created a fork and done some instrumental changes, and I hope they can contribute back, but they're not necessarily part of this community. So I was wondering if anybody knows what is the, the status on the, the, J, the Java software. It's um, been some... Been been some months ago, but but uh, but there was someone who merged my pull request on the on the library. But but that's that's some month ago, so I'm not sure if they're still active working. Um, yeah. Also, yeah, Java is always kind of like kind of always important because of open UI and other projects. Uh, and we had a maintainer, pretty active maintainer for the uh, table schema Java and. That the package Java, so at least uh, so maybe we can you know figure out uh, what the current status because previously it was uh, one of the main actively maintained uh, community driven implementations. Yeah, yes, sir. Would it be possible to, to somehow list on uh, to, to provide a list who is working on on which? Um, framework for which uh, for on the different frameworks for example the the, the python one the 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 r script the, the javascript etc so someone who wants to contribute or for example we we have money to to implement things and we might want to to improve one of those libraries because they are important for our ecosystem for our software ecosystem um, and we would like to know how who to con contact and to to get in touch that, that no double work is done. Um, so maybe that could be one thing that's that's listed on the website. Who is who is uh, yeah, responsible? Or who is he's the who's the who's the the main main contact person for for that library? I think that would be helpful to to coordinate the the implementation uh, effort. Yeah, that yes. would be something actually that we can add to the frictionless universe page um, and make it 
clearer. I mean, at the moment, might change a little bit, but the, found the Open Knowledge Foundation was kind of like leading the Python framework and then the rest was more community driven. Uh, but definitely it's something that we can specify like who you need to contact if you're interested in. Um, you know, yeah, also something. the status, how it's uh, active or not maintained. Then uh, for the um, maintainers, you have this uh, lead MD system that in the every like uh, repository, there is a lead MD uh, saying what person on GitHub you need to contact. But of course it's uh, kind of like internal one. So we can just have a table on some website of frictions or data package to uh, systemize uh, this information. But it's for uh, Java, it's uh, I snow, I think. It's, uh... yes, sir. Yeah, thanks again. Um... I don't know, Phil, uh, you mentioned that maybe you wanted to give a report of what you're doing software-wise. Um... Yeah, just, just super briefly and then one comment. So, um, and I don't presume to speak for Kyle here. He and I need to sort of get together. But as you know, um, we both are very interested in trying to um, really uh, increase adoption among the social science community. Um, and it's really three pieces of software that are critical there, uh, Stata, SAS, and SPSS. Um, and then also the um, social epidemiology community, um, which largely would mirror that. And then finally, the clinical, um, you know, uh, investigator community. Um, uh, one thing that that um, I'd love to talk with folks about is many of those packages, and I'll take Stata, for example, um, now have very, very tight interconnection with Python. And so it seems to me that, and the, the same would be true of R, and I, I'll be honest, uh, Peter, I, I apologize. I It's on my list of things to do, just not near the top, unfortunately, to take a look at, at the code and so forth in terms of how you've developed that. But it seems to me one thing we really want to avoid both in terms of just uh, to increase efficiency, but also to to make things easier to maintain and to increase consistency if people are using frictionless across the different packages is to see if there aren't some core, you know, sort of functions, basically a library for this software that those of us who are maintaining, you know, uh, packages, native packages for use in these various software uh, systems could draw on so that we're not reinventing the wheel and, and and that sort of thing. I know that that would be true, for example, for the Stata um, uh, implementation. That could almost be nothing more than a wrapper around core functionality in some combination of Python and C, for example, or Python and Java, it wouldn't matter. Um, so so I, if anybody has thoughts about about whether that's a good idea, and if so, the best way to kind of do that slowly so that we don't just stop everything and start from fresh, but so that we could gradually migrate to that, I would be really keen to talk with folks. And especially before I spend too much time, you know, beginning to upgrade things to version two. So I will, I am glad to take um, responsibility for, though anyone who wants to contribute is more than welcome, the Stata uh, uh, a part of this with a target of presenting that to the Stata community by the end of the summer. Um, and then the other thing I'll just mention real quickly is there are two things. We have a red cap to frictionless um, tool that would be would be really wonderful for anybody using Redcap, and I realize some folks here may not know what that is, but certainly in in biomedical and sort of clinical work, that has become kind of a de facto standard within the U.S. and 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 for a lot of NIH funded work. And then the other thing is, well, I have a student who's starting in two weeks uh, who will be writing basically code so that you can pull frictionless out of Gen 3. At CTDS, we build all of our platforms on top of something called Gen 3, which is a data sharing stack, um, you know, similar to Terra, if you're familiar with that, or, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and uh, and I the plan basically is that that'll be a two-month sort of internship summer project for him 
but my plan is by the end of that to have full support for frictionless and we'll just start on version two full support for frictionless version two in gen three which basically means that anyone who is pulling data from a gen three instance and so that would include things as big as the genomic data commons, which is the primary sort of way of sharing genetic data for all NCI funded studies, they will have frictionless as a first class citizen. Um, so if any, if I, anything I said, uh, if people are interested in any of it, have questions, anything like that, please, please hit me up uh, on Slack and I would be glad to, to talk more. Thanks, Phil. That sounds fantastic. Um, Kyle, maybe you wanted to add something to what Phil just said? Yeah, I just want to echo um, all of the stuff that Phil's saying. Um, I think um, uh, in the education social science community, there's a big need for uh, having our interfaces um, uh, for these uh, things and having a, a general library that that parses everything is something that I've been um, thinking a lot of, about as well. Um, I'm interested in a in a REST implementation so we can use the the type safety as well as the um uh the the, the utilities um there with um uh, this is how polars does it with they they have a polar core implementation in Rust that then goes into to Python and then into um to R as well. Um which is uh, so this has been a lot of tooling that's been developed in that area that I think would lend itself to a um a really a really nice data package implementation there. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. Um okay. And just a quick update uh, regarding outcomes of the lease iteration and all that I funded uh, that uh, we finished the uh, new CCAN uh, extension. It's already uh, for data package two, and it's uh, only for exporting uh, data, uh, not exporting, like having a kind of like data package JSON endpoint similarly to DCAT endpoint and CCAN. It's also there is a pending uh, pull request to in the new RDM like Zenodo, Zenodo uh, basically engine uh, that we expect you know to work with them like in coming months to uh, end up uh, on Zenodo, so they will have a uh, that package JSON export by default. I mean from the a list of different exports for all the Xeno data sets. And also I work on uh, open science framework integration, um, but this project is a little bit like less mundane than Xeno also. I'm not sure what will be the, you know, the path there, but uh, that's a quite quick update. I think, and of course, like in my opinion, the Xeno one is uh, super important because it's, uh, it will increase the other package uh, Coverage like drastically. So, I don't know how many data sets there are. Yeah, thanks, Ethan. And we'll definitely keep you all updated about, um, especially the Zenodo um, one and how that evolves. Um, we have one minute left, which basically just gives us the time to say thank you all um for this conversation um even one and a half was not long enough by far um we'll see each other again uh in one month and we'll go back to the sort of like presentation mode so if anyone here wants to talk a little bit about for example implementation work that could be a good place to do it um for the product community too um I'll write a message also in the community chat tomorrow. Um, we had initially chosen uh, the 24th as the release date, but as Evgeny pointed out at the beginning of the call, that might not be, that might be a bit optimistic. Let's say if we want to implement at least some of the changes in the website, uh, maybe not all, um, but if we want to include at least the, the, the major ones and the most important ones that you highlighted, then uh, it might make sense to push it over a couple of days maybe. Uh, but I'll, yeah, I'll keep you all updated on the community chat. And um, yeah, I don't know if anyone has anything else that they would like to share. Thanks for moderating. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. just 
say, uh, great work on the documentation so far. Um, like today, we focused on all the things we want to change about it, but I actually really liked it, giving it a first pass through and thought it was an uh, improvement from the past, for sure. So good job. Thanks, Keith. Oh, Phil, that I, looks... I, I don't know what that was or how I did it, but it definitely <laughs> reflects my concurrence with what Keith just said. <laughs> Thank I'm making you. rain thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all. Have a good rest of the day. And then, yeah, you'll hear from me maximum by tomorrow on the community chat, and we'll see each other in a month. Thanks all. Bye -bye. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye.